faculty and staff, family and friends, guests, and class of 2022, good morning. <laughs> I feel honored beyond words for this opportunity to deliver the valedictory. And as the voice of my remarkable classmates, I'd like to extend a few essential thank yous. First off, to all those who have helped us reach this point, we thank you. To our teachers, who day in and day out inspire our imagination, challenge us to think better and work bolder, and support our intellectual quests, we thank you. To our staff in public safety, who relentlessly pour their hearts into keeping us safe and comfortable, who gift us linchpin life lessons and fabled food. We thank you. <laughs> to our school leaders, Dr. Kelly, Dr. Levenstein, Senor Dallo, Dr. Wallach, and many others, who promote a valued and vibrant Horace Mann, nurture our individual and collective projects, and protect us and our education against COVID. We thank you. Special thanks to Mrs. Rudbeck for her string of yeses. We thank all our parents and families, without whom we literally wouldn't be here, for loving and supporting us, for reveling in our successes and cheering us through our setbacks. To mom, dad, and grandma, thank you for being there whenever I needed, including when I simoned you to more insurrections against college essays than there were battles in the Byzantine reconquest of Europe. <laughs> I'm also grateful to my dear cousin, a sister to me, for inspiring me to be a better role model. Finally, I'd like to thank all my classmates, whom we celebrate today, for being trusted partners to one another in our high school journey. I'm asking you to carry the Horace Mann spirit and keep learning, dreaming, and striving to make the world a better place bit by bit. Let's have a round of roaring applause for all the great people in our community. I must confess, on my first and last days as a Horace Mann student, the same emotion fills me, awe. Back then, coming into Horace Mann in sixth grade from a Bronx public school, I marveled at the spirit of our towering buildings, legendary library, and of course, our colossal cafeteria. But now, over my time at Horace Mann, I've come to realize just how special our school community is. We foster the joy of learning. We strive to welcome, include, and offer copious opportunities to all. Take me, for example. At Horace Mann, I can take a test for a class I'm not even in, flip identities with a friend for a day, and wear my Roman helmet to school. We grow deep friendships. We're open and honest about our shortcomings and moments of weakness, and we know when to ask and when to receive help from each other. We constantly collaborate with each other and continuously compete with ourselves. We are each other's cheerleaders of success, and I'm proud to belong to you, class of 2022. Thank you for extending your warm and generous hearts. Thank you for sharing your unbridled kindness, zeal, creativity. Thank you for letting me be me. Now I'm ready to start my valedictory. <laughs> but what is a valedictory? This word comes from two Latin words, dictus, the word for word, and vale, commonly translated as goodbye. So translating valedictory as goodbye speech isn't too surprising. But vale means so much more than just goodbye. It's an exhortation to be healthy, energetic, strong, beneficial, influential, all qualities I admire in you, all attributes I hope our valedictory will extend. Speaking of Latin words and me being me, something doesn't quite feel right. One moment. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, helmetless, first walked these halls, I assumed that all the universe's important facts were knowable and the school's purpose was to teach them. But Horace Mann is a uniquely humbling place. Inquisitive classmates and stimulating classes wasted no time dismantling that view. Each answer created two questions. Each year opened fields of study that sixth grade and ninth grade us couldn't begin to imagine. The more we knew, the more we knew we didn't know. From history's sprawling civilizations to physics' boundless space-time and English's countless interpretations of text. From the mundane idiosyncrasies to the deep truths of values, successes, and challenges you and I have shared as we grew closer. 
our time here taught us how little we can grasp compared to the, our universe's magnitude. How little we can assume, how little and how much we can know. So as we go out into the world, let's keep a healthy dose of humility because there's always more to learn. Yet, as small as you and I are, minuscule margins and leading edges often decide the world's path. At least, that's what I've gathered at Horace Mann, from studying the butterfly effect in physics to analyzing grammar in Latin. As a history lover, it truly clicked for me when we learned about the Industrial Revolution. For millennia, humanity eked out a miserable existence amid poverty and insecurity. Then, one boiling pot later, the revolution began. Over two centuries, the steam engine kick-started an unprecedented cascade of innovation. Over two centuries, our quality of life grew hundredfold. Small margins made a huge difference. It's easy for us to take what this means for granted. Thanks to the Industrial Revolution, I've never worried about clean water or dysentery, unless I'm playing the Oregon Trail game. Thanks to the Industrial Revolution, we can lead good, comfortable lives. But now, the triplet crises of demographics, community, and climate change are pushing our species to a tipping point, where humanity might choose to revert to a dark past or seize a bright future. And so, in this moment, we cannot stand idle, just as our footsteps will echo in Horace Mann's hallways for years to come. Let our actions reverberate across the earth for generations. Today, we have an amazing opportunity, thanks to Horace Mann, to be those leading edges that last. You know what? Let's make LAST an acronym. At Horace Mann, we learn, we achieve, we share, and we transcend. First, we're a bastion of learning. In few other institutions would we be expected to juggle learning postmodernist literary theory and electromagnetic fields, and few other institutions are capable and driven enough to pull it off. Horace Mann challenges us to be resourceful and creative learners, and compels us to mine the real world for intellectual value. Where else do English teachers use literal cartoons for literary analysis? And where else do physics teachers swing upside down, water-filled buckets in their uninsured homes to teach us rotation? True story. Second, we achieve. We think big and bombastic. In tests, projects, and life, we try, we often fail, and we build back better. We're future chemists, engineers, physicists. We're historians, writers, debaters, journalists. We sing, dance, swim, and act. We launch rockets, win Olympiads, and forge fields of new studies. And third, we share. We share our knowledge from classes to lunch tables. We share in each other's successes and celebrations, sorrows and struggles. Indeed, our greatest achievements are ultimately ones of sharing, whether we're sharing knowledge in Summer on the Hill, sharing our classes with the incarcerated, or sharing debates benefits with new countries. And fourth, we transcend. Or better said, thanks to Horace Mann and to each other, we and humanity can transcend. Together, we can transcend nature's vicissitudes, human war and selfishness, and our own limitations. Together, we can transcend the Earth itself, exalting ourselves into a peaceful, prosperous, space-faring society. We have the honor and the potential to be the leading edges, the margins, the pioneers, and a duty and obligation. We have so much to offer to each other and to the world, and so little time to offer it. So let's last. Let's seize that margin. Let's say goodbye and let's stay energetic and let's better the world, or as Roman General Flavius Belisarius would say, vale. <laughs>